Today, we are celebrating the 15 founders from 10 startups. And our goal for today is to acknowledge the amazing journey that you've been on over the past three months and acknowledge your progress, the after team, if you are ready to go. Australian households are throwing away 6,000 kgs of clothing every 10 minutes. That's one adult-sized elephant worth of clothing gone straight to landfill in the time we'll finish this pitch and Q&A. 78% of people care about what happens to their clothing after they dispose of it. Yet, this doesn't stop the problem. Oops. On top of that, commercial and industrial sectors make up to 65% of the total textile waste generation in Victoria alone. And unfortunately, only 2% of Victoria's textile waste is recycled due to the lack of infrastructure. Businesses are drastically shifting their agendas to achieve CSR and ESG goals. However, when it comes to textile waste, the options for transparent, ethical and secure recycling are limited for both individuals and businesses. Hi, my name is Yesha and this is my co-founder Nahal and we'd love to introduce to you after. We take care of unwearable textiles after you. Our mission is to empower Australia to participate in the circular economy by reinventing ethical textile disposal. So bringing after to life is a diverse team of passionate individuals that want to leave the world a better place. We come with a wealth of experience in entrepreneurship, product management, logistics, marketing, and partnerships. We have a B2B and a B2C market. The B2B market can be broken down into three segments, large clothing retailers, small to medium enterprises, and schools or sports clubs that use uniforms. Our B2C market are medium to high income family households that strive to practice sustainability in their everyday lives. Starting with individuals as our beachhead market, we tested our solution with MVP collection rounds, targeting customers through Facebook communities and Instagram. Within our first year of operating, we diverted 1.4 tons of textile waste from landfills in just three rounds of collections. We did 159 sales from households in and around Melbourne, making almost 4K in revenue. In the last few months, we've actually expanded into the B2B market, as this is a high impact direction for after to take. What's really exciting, though, is that we've already received 15 inbound queries from businesses without any active outreach from our end. We've engaged in conversations with companies like Kmart, North Melbourne Football Club, Mighty Good Basics, and more. So how does it work? Our service is really quite straightforward. First, our customers purchase and book the collections online. The after team then collects the unwearable textiles, which will be transported to various recycling partners, both on and offshore. These recyclers will then turn the unwearable textiles into new fiber, which after buys back and sells to manufacturers within Australia. For our service, we are charging $3.60 per kg for a once-off collection. We also offer a discounted rate of $3 per kg for four collections per year. This is our subscription model that we landed on through our B2B market research. Given the traction that we're receiving from businesses, our next steps are to firstly revisit our cost analyses given we're getting all this increased demand, by March, we aim to take one business with us on our MVP release journey. And six months down the line, we will have done a feasibility study on setting up some necessary infrastructure locally. So how can you help? We welcome introductions to businesses that produce any type of textile output, such as, but not limited to end of life uniforms, commercial linen, faulty stock, fabric scraps, or honestly anything that's material or textile based. If you know any family or friends in any of these businesses on the slide, please send them our way. And in addition, we're also looking to talk to textile manufacturers that can talk to us about their end-to-end -end processes. And finally, we'd love to chat to potential investors for your advice. We are a team who love fashion, but hate fast fashion. 
Time is running out to treat textile recycling as an afterthought. Join us. And Pez, you're on the ball. I love to see it and uh, you can take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Paz and I'm the co-founder of the Community Collective and we help businesses build a strong community. The problem that we are solving is the feeling of overwhelm, stress and anxiety and confusion that a lot of community managers can feel when they're tasked with trying to build a strong community of members for a business. We spoke to over, over 350 people in roles such as being a founder, a, a community manager, a program coordinator, and really they are struggling with how to understand how, how to engage members, how to grow the community sustainably, understand how to calculate and also communicate the return of investment and the impact that their efforts of their role and the community are having. Um, I personally also felt this problem um, from building community over six years for various startup support organizations as well. So the first solution that we wanted to create to solve this problem was actually to create a seven week experience where community builders can go through a cohort and access the online portal that we've built. So really the purpose of this cohort is to take people through and actually help them create an actionable strategy that they can implement for a business um, to really build a strong community. So we really focus on how do we connect the, them to people who are also facing a similar challenge? How do we ensure that they are building the right connections and also getting the right coaching and content uh, to help them on their way? In terms of the business model, so uh, people hear about us through word of mouth and newsletter and across the online sphere, and then uh, really people can join our free meetup community. So this started as a free meetup in June 2021 in between the fourth and fifth Melbourne lockdowns. And across that, uh, really, we started running a, a monthly meetup every month for people to connect and learn. Then once they've kind of, I feel trust with the brand, um, we funnel people in through to the cohort, which is a one-off fee for the seven-week experience. And then we've also been making money through strategy workshops. So various businesses have asked us to create a two-hour session, which would be a one-off payment um, to help them build a, an actionable strategy. In terms of subtraction, so this is actually predominantly growing through word of mouth, uh, which is awesome. So a lot of members are referring other people to join the community and connect in with what we're building. And from the free meetup community, it's grown uh, month on month uh, organically. And then we've seen a lot of engagement with things such as our newsletter um, with, with open rates and click throughs as well. In terms of the cohort, so during ADDO, we actually learnt, launched the first MVP of the seven-week cohort and we had a wait list of 150 people and then have 48 applications and then uh, 36 paying customers. So we had people uh, from across five countries, which is awesome to see the global reach. And then the best thing about uh, supporting community builders is, you know, really seeing them actually talk openly about the experience. So some of the um, LinkedIn posts here are just how people are explaining it. And even Kate at the bottom asking if they could do it again is very, very positive. In terms of who we're actually targeting, um, so these are organisations who are going through the first cohort. So the first main audience is, re is really the startup support organizations. So across Australia and New Zealand, there are a lot of founders and there are a lot of organizations, as a lot of you would know, that are supporting people to build startups. So uh, people from either venture capitalists or universities um, or, uh, for example, one-off accelerators as well. And then we've had people from large tech companies. So people who are trying to build a community to either understand and get feedback on a particular tech product or not-for-profits who are building um, in-person communities or uh, mental health groups as well. And then there's also founders who are building communities, uh, community-led startups from day dot. In terms of the team, it really is me at the moment. Um, I actually left my job in June this year to run this full-time, and I've been working on this um, as my full-time job for the past three months. And then we also do have two co-founders, but they've moved to an advisor role. And so we catch up quarterly to really talk about strategy. And then we had a lot of members of the community who actually wanted to help us and build the community alongside us. So we welcomed four ambassadors from a total of 12 applications to really have them help us build the community alongside us. Um, and as of yesterday, I started paying myself a wage in the business, which is also a very nice, um, yeah, it's like a humbling achievement as a founder. 
So where to next? Um, if we can continue creating value for people like Shafkat who left this comment about the cohort, then I think we could really actually think about how to create more solutions. So we plan to run two cohorts next year and then also thinking about what other um, products and solutions could we have. And that brings me to the end. So if you know anyone that would benefit from our community, feel free to send them our way or feel free to join the newsletter and stay connected to what we're building. Thank you. Uh, next up, we've got Bagya from Global Diet Aids. Hello, everyone. I'm Bagya Vichitung. I am the CEO and co-founder of Global Diet Aids. We are currently a company of two. Myself, with my background and experience in marketing, business management, and innovation. And Martin Park, my fellow co-founder, who for over 45 years has simultaneously worked across two industries, health and fitness as a naturopath and weight loss consultant, and entertainment as a writer, director, and filmmaker. Currently, 53% of the world's adult population are overweight or obese. That is three and a quarter billion people. In 2022, there are more diet programs and apps and gurus and influencers available to choose from than there has ever been in history. So with all this information available, we should be well and truly get on top of this problem. But in 2022, the combined success rate of all weight loss products and services is between 5 and 20 percent, depending on whose research you choose to believe. That is an 80 to 95 percent failure rate. According to the World Health Organization, the fundamental cause of overweight and obesity is an energy imbalance between calories consumed and calories expended. But the major players avoid telling the simple truth for fear of losing their market share. Instead, with their billions, instead, with their billions of dollars in marketing and advertising propaganda, they attempt to funnel you into their special secret method. And with their monthly subscription business model, they try to keep you there for as long as they can to increase your customer lifetime value. The current system is broken. It needs to move away from a purely financial profit metrics focus and towards a customer success and well-being focus. At Global Diet Aids, that is what we intend to do. We have created the Humble Diet concept as an alternative and to challenge the current status quo of the weight loss products and services industry. We have created the Humble Diet program for anyone who is looking for an antidote to the excesses of our modern and often eat indulgent eating habits and is wanting to take responsibility for their health, weight, and well being. Our program is easy to do. They join and after a simple onboarding process, they choose from three nutritionally balanced options, Asian influenced, European influenced, Western influenced. Then they access their seven day menu and a shopping list that they can either load directly into the Coles, Woolworths or IGA app and place their order. Or if they prefer to shop at a market or different store, then they can use the PDF version to purchase their supplies. The average cost of using one of the top 20 weight loss platforms is $267 per attempt. We will charge a one-off fee of $99 for lifetime access to the program and our community platform. And our, all of our marketing for this product will be focused on creating honest and informative content across all relevant digital platforms. We are also creating our feature length documentary, The Humble Diet, which will take a critical look at the current state of the weight loss products and services industry in the same way as an inconvenient truth did with global warming. We have an anticipated Netflix release for early 2024.
Throughout the Ato Accelerator program, my initial ideas were challenged, but instead of that slowing me down, it actually accelerated my progress. And because of that, we will now have our program launched by January 2023. My ask for today is if anyone would like to try out our program for free, then please contact me. Thank you for your time. Uh, next up, we've got Laura Green from Lipsy Lou Learning, if you're ready to share your screen. Okay. Hi, I am Laura Green, and I am the owner and operator of Lipsy Lou Learning, which is an educational platform supporting child development um, for children aged zero to six years of age. Uh, my background is in speech pathology. I've been a speech pathologist for over 12 years and working um, in private clinics and in schools, I did notice that there are a lot of children who are slipping through the cracks and either aren't getting the support that they need or just aren't being identified as needing support. Um, and at the moment, there is just a huge demand for speech pathology and other allied health services. Um, the demand has yeah, never been higher. So what do we know? We know that oral language is one of the biggest predictors of academic and social success. And we know that 25% of Australian parents are concerned about their child's communication development. So that is a huge amount of parents that do have these concerns but aren't really able to access the information that they need easily to know whether they should be concerned or not. Um, we also have one third of children who are able to access uh, supports sitting on waiting lists. Um, I've heard horror stories of parents waiting for over six months, six months to a year to be able to access these services. And we do know that we have a particular window. So 90% of brain development is occurring before children turn five. So we do really need to get more children accessing the support that they need. Um, we also know that preschool educators report that 22% of children have difficulty communicating. And they also report that they don't have the confidence or the skills to be working to help these children, despite knowing that it is part of their role. So they just aren't getting the training. And by 2030, this is going to become even more challenging because we're moving towards an inclusive uh, model of education, which means that special education settings will no longer exist. And it will just be on classroom teachers. Of course, there'll be some systems of support set up, but it's not people, yeah, we, we don't know what that's going to look like just yet. But it basically means that teachers who have not necessarily had to work with children with these difficulties, um, will be working with them and will most likely be thrown in the deep end. So um, as part of figuring out how to solve this problem, I wanted to speak to the people who are with the children. So that's the educators and the parents. So I've created, I created a survey to find out what educators actually want, whether they do feel that there's a need and they did confirm what was in the research that I looked at, that there is the need and that they do not feel prepared to help children with their communication skills, as well as other behavioural issues and sensory issues that are coming up more and more now. Um, they don't feel that they have the support from allied health professionals and they want this. And as far as parents, I've been monitoring um, Facebook groups that, of parents who have children with language delays and so just trying to um, see what the questions common questions are which is very much about what can they do while they sit on wait lists um, you know what's what does the future look like for their child does their child have a problem so there are they are able to access this information across all different platforms but there's no one place that they can go so um, my initial plan was to pilot, sorry, to uh, launch a course where I worked with eight families and they went through a course with me, a program where I created videos that the children could watch and they'd learn new skills, but the parents would also be upskilled so that they knew how to support their child in day-to-day -day interactions. There was homework activities, which I did find that the parents are very busy. So this is now um, a focus on the platform is moving towards rather building um, these oral language 
uh, skills into their everyday activities. Um, but I had really good feedback about the content and children were really loving watching the videos and learning from the videos, which was really positive. And parents were saying that their kids were learning new skills. Um, so I have created a website, a, pl a platform that has access to courses on it. So parents log in, they select the course that they wanted to look at, and then it has all different episodes that target different learning areas. And then they get um, different ways that they can support their children when during everyday activities. Now, I was the plan was prior to Addo Accelerator was to sell this to parents only, but I really am now moving towards more of a business to business model. Um, I want to eventually have a subscription model um, where teachers can access the content from myself as a speech pathologist, but also as um, other allied health professionals. So hey, Laura, also, well, yeah. I'm really sorry we're at five minutes. So if you could just okay, click through your good. slides and show us what's coming sure. and then summarize really quickly if you could. Sure. Um, yeah, so what is coming is a speech pathology, sorry, is a platform where um, child development and I guess, yeah, basically bringing together that information that they need, so child development um, norms, um, what they can do while they're on waiting lists, a community to support their journey and access to both traditional and um, untraditional services. And yes, my ask is to follow anyone, follow me on Instagram or encourage people who have children two to six year olds at Lipsby Learning or any early educator introductions to continue the conversation. Thank you for listening. Next up, we've got Anushi, if you're ready to go as well. Good morning, everyone. Hi, my name is Anushi and I'm the founder of MISTI. So we're on a mission to provide rapid protection using lung delivery of life-saving medication. Actually, MISTI started with me when I was seven years old. I had significant needle phobia, which meant getting basic medicines into me were proving to be very difficult. It turned out I was not alone. There, in the five minutes that I'll be talking to you, um, nine children would miss out on such basic protection provided by these type of medicines. So I dedicated my, the last 15, of, uh, 15 years of my career in research and development to identify a key gap in the market. In particular, emerging respiratory infections um, could really benefit from creative novel solutions. So our solution is a novel nebulizer that is low cost, simple and effective. We are using an extremely efficient form of high frequency or high energy sound waves to interact with the fluid to provide a very fine, safe mist. Our focus initially will be the RSV or the respiratory sensor virus, which is now identified as a leading cause of pneumonia in children under the age of five, which accounts for a serious 200,000 deaths globally in children under the age of five. But our, 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 our technology is applicable to other diseases like COVID-19 and other leading respiratory viruses. Since commencing the ATO program, we've launched a, a live survey to capture some of the lived experiences of children infected with RSV. The guardians and carers um, mentioned that um, the babies presented with cold-like symptoms with a look like a severe and progressed to a severe co a cough. And in some cases, it led to devastating um, outcomes being hospitalized in some cases. We also noticed that childcare centers are hot spots for contracting RSV. But that survey is ongoing. So these insights have really shaped our go-to-market strategy. We with plans to launch a consumer device for Australia in 2024. We will establish product market fit and really try and gain as much real-world evidence before proceeding to the medical grade MISTI, which is planned to launch in um, the human trials and um, regulatory approval plan for New Zealand, and we'll plan to launch our medical grade MISTI in 2026. So we have two key strategic revenue channels for MISTI in the pipeline. We have a medical grade offering, which is a take home MISTI servicing the hospitalized children with RSV, which will generate a healthy 5.3 million revenue every year. And we also have this consumable offering, which is a nebula and refill option, which additionally offers a $2 million revenue every year. So it's safe to say that our team are leading this space. I've dedicated my PhD and postdoc career in the last 15 years to this project. And we have been able to develop a really well stress-tested prototype for emerging therapies and the biological medicines that are coming into the pipeline now. 
Um, we have also built strategic partnerships with the MedTech Actuator and the Atto um, since uh, launching this company um, several months ago. So I'm the founder and CEO, and I'm actually supported by an impressive team of experts spanning research, finance, marketing, sales, and legal. And I've also got a fantastic um, team of advisors um, who actually were leaders in this, in this space and including IP, regulatory, investment, banking, engineering, and clinical expertise in RSV. So the MISTIS priorities for the next six months will be developing the consumer device, uh, Feed, for, Feed for Australia um, integration, and we have managed to secure a product development partner, an incredible partner. We are this year's Building Better Futures Challenge winners, um, and um, we're going to continue our discussions with major hospitals and to establish our medical distribution channels. So overall, MISTIS will stand here until we, no one is left behind who we could protect otherwise. And I will encourage you all to follow our journey on LinkedIn. So thank you very much for having me. Got a mumble me. Okay. Hi, I'm Jess and I'm here with my co-founder, Anita. Together, we have founded Mumble Me, a platform that connects professionally skilled mothers with flexible work opportunities. Post-pandemic, Australian businesses, sorry, one second. It's okay. So yeah, post-pandemic, post-pandemic, Australian businesses are facing a huge skill shortage. Workers are demanding more flexibility and people are now set up to work remotely. Women are three times more likely than men to leave the workforce in their 30s. These are the prime career building years as well as child rearing years. Often by that age, professionally trained women have 10 plus years of experience and excellent skills, but many have to take a step back in their careers as the current society and work structures cannot support them well enough to do both. The gap between men and women in terms of financial independence, senior leadership opportunities, then significantly widens beyond the 30s into their 40s and their 50s. As ambitious working mums of young children ourselves, we have experienced a challenging juggle. More needs to be done to support working women. An increase in female workforce participation by 6% will increase Australia's GDP by $25 billion. There is both an imperative as well as an opportunity here. Mumble Me is building a community of working mums that are empowered to have the balance that they choose to have between their careers and their home lives. Mumble Me is an online marketplace that connects skilled mums that need flexible work with businesses that need highly skilled workers. Our initial focus will be on industries that um, and roles that are conducive to remote working, um, including in marketing, HR, comms, accounting and finance. And our target client audience are medium-sized business businesses that don't necessarily have large HR teams or systems, but have hiring needs. Mumble Me will be earning a percentage of the value of the contract or salary for our services. So early on in our pre-launch phase, we took our idea to our target audiences. We surveyed more than 50 working mums who gave us some key insights and they'd experienced being sidelined for going part-time, overlooked for promotions because of their career gap, not being able to use their full skill set, and they were less likely to put themselves forward for promotions because they'd be required to do overtime. We also interviewed businesses and were close to signing our first client because the labour shortage is requiring businesses to look more broadly. They have roles that are flexible and need expert skills but cannot find people who want these roles. And one business was even putting up posters in schools to find mums who wanted flexibility. Once we had these insights, which validated what we've hypothesized, it was time to start working towards building our platform. We explored all types of web solutions from complete low code, no code and full custom builds. We even tried to build it ourselves and then finally came across a white label template that has the elements of what we need for our platform to achieve, easy to fill profiles and job posts, um, data management that's appropriate for us to focus our core offering of matching working mums to roles and then other elements to provide the full service can actually be integrated as well. So signing employment contracts and facilitating payments. 
We've we had a launch time frame of November back when we started this journey in April, and we're very excited to say that we are mere days away from launching. So here's a sneak peek of our homepage. In terms of next steps, as Anita mentioned, um, we will be launching in a matter of days or weeks um, in terms of our soft launch. And so we'll be focusing on signing up the mums as well as the businesses and really building the Mumble Me brand. Our goal for quarter one, um, and we've deliberately um, done a soft launch ahead of Christmas so that we can, we know it's going to be a bit quieter in the job market over the next few months that will allow us to have users really test our platform. But our goal is to have 10 matches, um, 10 matches of mums with um, businesses in um, the first three months of 2023. In time to come, we'll also be exploring um, partnerships uh, with other adjacent um, businesses or groups um, that are passionate about supporting these mums. Our asks are, if you know of any professionally skilled mums that are looking for flexible work, particularly in the areas of marketing, accounting and comms, please um, introduce them to us and have them sign up to Mumble Me. Um, and if you, have, um, if you have contacts with um, certain businesses that have hiring needs, um, please let us know. And what we've said here is we would love introduction to ideal customers. Um, an example, this is a live example of um, that we're talking to, a, um, it's a medium-sized business that has more than 50 people and they're looking for a HR generalist um, that is a bit strategic um, and has all these skills, um, but is, uh, yeah, but is looking for flexible work uh, and will be doing hybrid arrangements. So something like this would be perfect um, for our Mumble Me users. Thank you for your time and we would be happy to take questions. And Anastasia is going to go next with Soulship. Hi, everyone. My name is Anastasia and I am a founder of Soulship Company. my goodness. <laughs> so the problem Soulship is trying to solve is um, the mental and emotional well-being of the wider community. And since COVID and all the challenges we have faced, um, mental and emotional well-being has been compromised. There's a lot of disconnection, discontent and general dysfunction in, um, in, in the lives of people. Often people are feeling stuck, frustrated, alone, in fear, as a lack of connections, anger, anxiety. So Soulship it has developed an app to offer a very simple solution to this problem to boost the emotional and mental well-being through daily meditation, journaling, and sharing. So these are uh, three ingredients where people will be meditating, then they're going to be journaling inside the app to self-reflection questions, and then they'll be sharing in the chat with each other and building the connections. So a little bit of my background, I am a primary school teacher and I've been teaching at primary schools social and emotional uh, programs and just really witnessing the importance of that mental well-being the mental and emotional well-being and how meditation and mindfulness has made a really huge difference in children's lives then I became a meditation and yoga teacher and um, again witnessing the profound impact these techniques have on people's lives um, I'm also right and I write the programs for soulship for Soulship um, Company, for the Soulship app. And lastly, I personally have had the experience, this experience of journeying together with two other friends in a small container, meditating, journaling and sharing. And it's absolutely changed my life. So what Soulship is offering is different programs that people can choose from um, that range between eight and 22 days. And once they choose a program, they'll be allocated into small groups of three randomly. And then every day of the journey, they'll be given a meditation link to complete the meditation at their own, own time. And then there is a journaling tab in the app where they will be answering questions to self-reflection um, to self-reflection questions and then they'll be sharing the answers in the group chat and interacting with each other and building the connection 
So Soulship uh, business model offers uh, many flexible sign-up options. So one can pay for the program um, or a one-off fee, or there is uh, tier memberships and we would like to be able to charge different tiers and people can choose in the integrity what they pay. So there'll be three tiers available. And at the moment, we're having a, um, a limited time pre-launch sale at only $29 for the full year of access to any programs. Uh, why are we different? There's lots of meditation apps out there, and um, but yet none of them offer the journeys in small groups. And the transformational elements of soulship is being vulnerable being witnessed and being accountable for daily meditations as well. So where are we at? Uh, we have developed the MVP. It has been tested and we're about to launch in December 2022. And our website is ready and I'm about to make it live to get the first um, signups. And how could you help us? Uh, please follow us on Facebook page. Sign up for a free trial to try Soulship for yourself. Check out our website. And we're also exploring angel investors opportunities. And we would love to hear your feedback. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Effie, if you are ready to go, uh, we're ready for you. Okay, thanks, Lana. So I'm talking about Stratoboss. So Stratoboss is a prop tech startup that's poised to disrupt Strata property management. By empowering strata owners to take back control of their owners' corporation. So two years ago, after moving into my strata property in Bayside, Melbourne, it wasn't long before it dawned on me that the owners' corporation had naively handed over control of the strata management responsibilities to an external third party. So the owners' corporation fees had doubled in three years, budgets weren't being adhered to, which was resulting in expenditure blowout, and there was a constant need to raise special levies to cover funding shortfalls. So due to the volume of properties being managed, strata managers are overloaded with an unsustainable level of service requests that they can't reasonably address, which is resulting in burnout, poor service levels, and adversely affecting business profitability. So collusion between strata managers demanding secret commissions and kickbacks from service providers drives up costs for the owners' corporation members. Lack of transparency means service provider contracts are allowed to roll over without any warning to OC committees, and this ultimately has an adverse effect on property values and investor ROI. So the frustration with external third-party strata management firms is driving an overwhelming shift towards self-management. And this coupled with declining profitability of strata management, reinvestor ROI, and the adverse effects on property prices, all of these conditions have created a perfect storm of disruption. As the strata sector is unregulated and has no watchdog, this makes it highly susceptible to rorting and corruption. The Victorian branch of the Strata Community Association has prioritised support and protection of strata consumers, strata sustainability and combating building defects in the lead up to the 2022 Victorian state election, all of which are closely aligned to our agenda at Stratoboss. So Stratoboss is building a hybrid strata management platform that will provide owners corporations with the benefits of self-management, along with the peace of mind that comes with having access to a professional strata manager for risk mitigation. So the purpose of the key functionality of the tool will be to give that control to the owners corporation by facilitating stakeholder collaboration, streamlining contract and work order management, direct access to service providers and proactive project management. The size of the residential property operators market in Australia is worth 30.1 billion and has grown 2.4% in 2022. And nationally, there are over 340 thousand strata schemes in 2020 and more than 100,000 schemes with between six to 50 lots, which represents strata boss's key target market. And coincidentally, the Victorian population living in strata properties has grown from 9% in 2020 to 25% in 2022, which represents 1.6 million residents overall. 
So the total value of the serviceable obtainable market is estimated at 357 million nationally based on the average strata management fees, 3,500, assuming we target strata schemes with six to 50 lots, which makes up 30% of the national total. So currently the most prevalent business model in the strata sector is professional services contracts with contracts generally in place for a duration of three years. And the total estimated revenue for the Victorian region is 620k in the first year, based on acquisition of a conservative 1% market share, with contract value dependent upon property lot numbers and based on the assumption that the number of building services increases with lot number. So um, my name's Athi and I'm the founder of Stradboss, and I have more than 20 years experience with Onus Corporation and a proven success in taking over and self-managing a strata property for more than five years. Uh, so currently the top five post ADO program priorities for Strata Boss. Uh, um, so our, um, so my landing page is currently live. So one of the, the key priorities is pick up the leaves by driving traffic to the landing page and there's also a survey there for um, the people to fill out and I'm also keen to build a um, Strata owner support book Facebook community. Um, I'm also planning on building a Strata fee calculator uh, and looking at raising some funding and also starting development of the Strata boss form MVP. So thanks very much for your time today. This pitch was brought to you by Stratoboss, empowering owners corporations to be your own Stratoboss. I will uh, hand over to Deborah. Thanks, Hayden. Um, hi, welcome to Stone Tulips. I'm Deborah, the co-founder and managing director, and I'm here with Fernanda, the founder and creative director. We're two fashion industry veterans and have witnessed fast fashion's devastating effects on the environment firsthand. So we're on a mission to disrupt the industry and reshape the future of fashion. Stone Tulips is the first exclusively vintage marketplace connecting small businesses to our network of loyal vintage shoppers worldwide. In our industry, we've always shopped vintage for inspiration and have the experience selling our own collections on existing resale platforms. We know that buying vintage is the most sustainable way to shop and creates a circular economy, and it will become even more sought after and valuable over time. Overall, the resale market, including vintage and secondhand, is projected to reach $218 billion by 2026. But based on our industry insights and customer feedback, uh, we understand that sellers have difficulty reaching their target audience and growing their online business, mainly because the resale market is becoming so oversaturated with fast fashion items and they have limited resources. So we're building an infrastructure to power the next gen of fashion and become the most trusted and exclusive place to shop vintage. We have a mobile-based marketplace built around a social network where users can create their profile, set up their shop, connect to our community, and discover vintage from the best indie shops around the globe. Our sellers are pre-approved for authenticity, and we only accept shops that sell true vintage clothing, accessories, and collectibles. We've just completed the beta testing where we've had hundreds of successful transactions. So we're super excited that our app is now available to download in 48 countries. In addition to the app, we've built a large social media following thanks to our curated content. And another top vertical will be hosting live marketplace events in major cities to reach a massive audience and grow and support our local communities, starting with our first event scheduled in LA next month. We have a unique capital light business model. There's no trend forecasting manufacturing or inventory, and we have shared marketing with our customers who generate their own content and conversion. There's a 10% flat commission fee for transactions, 
We have free unlimited version available for all users and options to upsell into a pro or exclusive plan with extra services and benefits for our sellers. Our target audiences are millennial and Gen Z owned vintage shops and shoppers. We're focused now on the supply side of the marketplace at these beginning stages, and we'll partner directly with our shops as part of our go-to market strategy. And we thought this journey would be a very linear process because we have the connections and a large following, and we've received really positive feedback about our concept and product, but building a marketplace and converting that to paying customers has been a challenge because we first need to build the trust. So based on that learning, we're creating those one-to-one -one relationships with our shop owners, and we'll have more community support and resources available, especially in the onboarding stage. Besides supporting small businesses and creating a circular economy, we can make a huge social and environmental impact. We're a woman of color and female-led company representing diversity and inclusion, both internally and externally. We aim to grow underrepresented markets and make vintage more acceptable and accessible. Joining the ADDO program has helped us accelerate our progress and our next step is promoting the app, building out our marketplace and generating revenue. We aim to acquire 1 million active users within the next 12 to 18 months. In the long term, we'll continue evaluating our product and customer experience, scaling our marketing and platform. We're also working towards B Corp certification. So thank you so much for allowing us to share more about what we're building at Stone Tulips and we appreciate your support. We'd love to have you join our community. Uh, reflect on today, reflect on your pitches and know that you've done a lot of work and you've made a lot of progress. Uh, Addo is still here to support you. So again, whenever you launch anything new or you want our support, please get in touch because uh, we love hearing what uh, your updates about what you've been up to. See everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Have a good afternoon. Yeah. Thanks, Judy. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye, everybody.